Still no agreement yet on the specifics of what that new deal could look like. Perhaps Alyssa Farah uh, joining us from, from the White House. Alyssa Farah, thank you for your time this morning. Can you give us an update on where these talks stand and what is happening at 3 o'clock today? Yes, absolutely, Sandra. Thanks for having me. So some progress on stimulus talks. The president has been very clear that getting direct aid and PPP to millions of Americans and businesses is his top priority. I would say this. Speaker Pelosi has been reluctant to move toward the many offers we've put on the table, but we're feeling cautiously optimistic that she may be moving toward where we have um, set the bar. The one thing I would note, though, is this 48-hour deadline is really an artificial deadline. The American people need help. We're going to get it to them, whether it's 72 hours, 24 hours, or longer. Okay, so is that phone call happening at 3 o'clock? Can you confirm that, Steve Mnuchin and, and the speaker? That's my understanding. And they, I, real, I believe that they've spoken at least at the staff level over the weekend. Um, so there have been ongoing conversations back and forth, and the White House has been engaged with Capitol Hill as well. How far would you say is the president willing to go to make that deal happen? He is, he is willing to go pretty far. What we've said is we'd even come up on the amount that is given in direct payments to American families in looking at the PPP amounts um, so that it's more that we're actually going toward. What we have concerns with and where the fault lines continue to lie is over state and local assistance, which is essentially asking for bailouts of states that have been mismanaged for years, mostly Democrat-run states, unrelated to the COVID crisis. So that's something we can look at at legislation on, at, in legislation down the road, but it's not part of this immediate package from the Republicans' perspective. Okay. As you know, uh, Democrats heading into Election Day have kept a serious focus on COVID-19 and the rising cases that we're seeing in the United States. Dr. Fauci gave an interview on 60 Minutes, made a news on a lot of fronts, but specifically this on the president's COVID diagnosis. Listen. I was worried that he was going to get sick when I saw him in a completely precarious situation of crowded, no separation between people and almost nobody wearing a mask. When I saw that on TV, I said, oh my goodness, nothing good can come out of that. That's got to be a problem. And then sure enough, it turned out to be a super spreader event. He was also asked in that interview if the White House has been limiting his media appearances. Has the White House tried to stop him uh, from appearing on television as much as he was in the past or giving interviews? So two things. First, on that first point, um, nearly 7 million Americans have contracted coronavirus. I don't think that we should get into the business of blaming people for getting the virus. But the other thing is the president has a responsibility to be on the road, to be meeting with members of Congress, to be doing the job. This is not a job where he can be, you know, hiding in his basement. Um, from the virus. He's got to be out and he's assumed some risk in doing so. So I, I really don't think we should get into the he had it coming. Seven million plus Americans have also gotten the virus. On the second point, absolutely not. I can't think of a more visible figure around coronavirus than Dr. Fauci. But um, in the fact that he was appearing on 60 Minutes, I mean, clearly we're not limiting his um, television presence. But there's also a number of doctors and experts on the task force. And we want to make sure that we're putting all of those experts experts out. Secretary Azar, for example, uh, was on the Sunday shows this weekend giving an update to the American public. Dr. Burks is in states um, where cases are rising, doing regional, local media, and meeting with public health officials to give updates. Okay, so this well, is sort of... One oh, more question on that note, because his exact response to whether or not the White House has been controlling his media appearance, he said, I would have to be honest and say, yes, I certainly have not been able or allowed to go on many, many shows that have asked me. So is he wrong? Well, it's a, it's a little more complicated than that. So with any administration figure, whether it's a cabinet secretary or Dr. Fauci, they will deconflict their segments with, white, with the White House so that the president's message is always leading the day. So, of course, if the president is appearing live somewhere giving a speech, we generally don't book guests around that. But, you know, the the, Dr. Fauci has been on an incredible amount of TV. It's hard to turn on the TV and not see him. And we're certainly not trying to stifle him sharing important information with the public. Oh, okay. And as far as the importance of a vaccine, obviously this could be a game changer if eventually we do see one. Andrew Cuomo, the governor of New York, uh, went on Good Morning America and said this on trusting a vaccine that gets approved under this president. Listen. 
I'm not that confident, but my opinion doesn't matter. You're going to say to the American people now, here's a vaccine, it was new, it was done quickly, but trust this federal administration and their health administration that it's safe. I think it's going to be a very skeptical American public about taking the vaccine. We're going to put together our own group of doctors and medical experts to review the vaccine. How does the White House respond to him talking about a skeptical American public of a vaccine that could get approved under this presidency? Uh, those are highly irresponsible comments to make, and we made the same point after Senator Harris also um, kind of alluded to some anti-vaxxer comments in the debate with the vice president. The, 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 the vaccine that comes to market will be both safe and effective and will go through an independent review board. These are not, these are not political appointees who are reviewing this. These are career medical professionals and scientists. Mm -hmm. And Dr. Monsef Slawi, who's the head of Operation Warp Speed, who pre the president put at the helm of it, has brought dozens of vaccines safely to market. He's one of the foremost experts around the world in this field. So the American people should trust him um, and they should trust this process. And playing politics with the vaccine is extremely dangerous. I've only got a few seconds left. Two campaign stops in Arizona today, debate Thursday night. What does the next few days look like for the president? The president's going into the schedule of two-a-day, three-a-day rallies. He's not stopping. Um, we're kind of surprised to see that Vice President Biden is now down until Thursday. The presidency is not a job where you can take any days off and you can take naps and, you know, be down until for several days. The president will be out and about meeting with the American people, telling him about what he's accomplished for them and what he's going to do in the four years ahead. Alyssa Farah, live from the White House for us this morning. Alyssa, we th thank you.